Hello, in today's awesome video I'm going to be showing you how to make healing pads. So in this video I'll be showing you how to make the easy healing pad, in another video I'll be showing you how to make a harder version which has slightly better features such as animations. Okay, as an example of how one of these works, I'm going to show you, I'll give myself some damage, like so, and the healing pad will heal me up, as you can see in my health bar on the top right corner of my screen. Same with the harder version. Each of these healing pads will have a cooldown, so you can select someone and just can't start spamming them and healing up instantly, and you'll be able to customise that inside the script. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, with building some of these, we're going to need the actual part that you're going to be touching. And that's easy to do. So you go up here, you press part, and you're just making yourself a nice little thing that you can touch. You need to be in the select tool and you can move the part around. And then I'm going to rotate it. So it faces up. And then move it. Now you see that I can't move it further any, any further up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the movement to 0 0.1 and that means I can move it further up, as you can see. And then I can just enlarge it to whatever size I want. Go back to the select tool. There we go. So it's now on the ground. Now I'm going to change the colour. I'm going to make it all nice and green. This is in the, the properties bit of the part, the colour. And you can just select it as green. That's really easy to do. So now in our part here, we're going to add a script. You just press the, the plus icon and then go to script. Okay, this is where it's going to get complicated. So you've got to pay attention. Now we're going to set our cooldown. Now you can set that to whatever you like. And that's just going to allow us later on in the script to be able to add a weight to be able to say, well, you can only touch and get the health every so many seconds. And we also need to specify how much health we're going to give to the player. And we're going to do this here. Okay, so that's our customizable bits done. Now we're going to get a Roblox service, the player service. what I've done there so that's basically a service and that's going to allow us to use it later on to see if the part that touched that this part here it's going to see if the part that touched that part is a player or something else again we're going to use that later on now we're actually going to have to get the part itself because this script doesn't actually know it's this part here that we want to see if it's um, the person's touching so we're going to do that now. So we're going to say if local part. Now local is always a Roblox variable. So we use that in any script. So local part equals script. So that's this script here. Dot parent. So that's getting the parent which is the part. Okay. Now this is the bit that gets complicated. So now we have to get the part. And we're going to see if something's touched the part. And like so. And then we're going to make it a function. So we're now what we're going to do is that every time someone touches the part, the, stu the stuff in here is going to fire. So if we go print hey, and if we go over to this, which is the part that we're working on, and if we move our player over to it, you will see it's in a lo loads of hays in the output here. That's expected. So every time someone touches it, it's going to fire. But we don't want to write hey, we want to give them health, don't we? So the first thing we need to do, you might have noticed that when we press play here, it said hey before our parallel play even loaded in. So we definitely haven't touched it. Look, we haven't, we're nowhere near it and it said hey already. So we need to make it so that it doesn't happen because obviously we can't give help. Uh, help to us if we're not touching it. The way we're going to do that is we're going to do a couple of checks. First of all, we need to get the character of the player. I forgot to mention that you need to add part here. So 
basically whenever this fires it will tell you what part has touched it so it might have been your leg or your head that touched it and that's going to be put in here so the local char the character is a parent of the touch part so i'm going to demonstrate here Now if you play here, you're going to see what I'm going to show you in a second. So you see, we don't want to give base, um, the base plate any health, and it will error if we do so, because the base plate can't have any health, but my player can. So, if we touch it, you see that it's, I haven't touched it myself, my left lower leg has touched it. Now we need to get the character of, the, of that part. So this is this is me, and inside of it, it is the left lower leg, and that my leg has touched it, and I'm inside my character. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we've got the character. We're going to do this. So if the character does not equals nil, then basically we're saying if the character does exist, then we're going to do this. Next we're going to get the humanoid. So the humanoid is the object inside the character that stores the health. So you know when you're running along and um, you want to change your speed, you would change your speed inside the humanoid object. Same with your health, same with your gravity, anything like that, it's always in the humanoid. Okay, so now we're going to get the humanoid value, and that's the part of the player where all of the values are stored, such as the player's speed, their gravity, so we're going to get that. So, the local humanoid equals the char, the character, and we're going to find the humanoid. And then we're going to see if that actually exists. Because if it doesn't, then we don't want it to run, do we? Does that make sense? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check if that humanoid has any health at all. Because if it's already dead, there's no point giving any health to it, is there? So if the humanoid dot health is more than zero, then we're going to keep the script running. If not, we're going to end it there. Now we're going to find the player. So basically, there might be some other thing that... So next we're going to find the player. Now this is the object that the character is linked to. So I'll have a demonstrate now. In the game, you have your character, which is the thing that actually moves around to this thing here. And then you also have a player. Inside this player is all sorts of things. That's not relevant. So we're just going to see if that player object exists. A reason for checking this is because you can have things like bots and rigs. Now, these have humanoids and they also have health. So it won't error so far. However, you don't want, obviously you don't want one of these nicking your health. So we're going to check if it's actually a player. Because this will have a character. This is a character but a dummy's not going to have a player. So we're going to say local player equals players, so that's the service we got at the start, get player from character, and then we're just going to get the, put the character in there. And then if a dummy, like we said before, touches that part, then it won't have a player value. So we're going to go if player exists then continue the script again now the next thing we're going to do is a debounce part of the script and this is a really interesting part of the script because it stops the player from getting loads of health just for walking over it so if i demonstrate at the moment with all of our exceptions that are getting the player health getting the character every time it prints hey it would symbolise getting more health at the moment in the output. 
If you walk over this load, you can see we've already got 10 haze. Now we don't want that, we only want there to be one because we've walked over it once. Now the best way to do that is a debound, so that's really easy to do. So you put at the top again, local debounce equals false. And this basically says it's ready, the script is ready to go if someone touches it, we're not going to stop it from running. So if we say if the debounce is false, then we're going to keep going. And the moment it gets there, we're going to say debounce equals true. Because basically what that's going to say is we don't want it to happen again until something else happens. And I'll come back to that later. The next thing we now need to do is give the player that health, which is really easy to do. So humanoid.health, so that's getting that change in the health, equals their current health, plus the health you want to give them at the start. So we just copy it and paste that over there. Okay, the next thing we want to do is wait until the cooldown duration is over. And that's really easy to do. We can use the wait function and then we're going to wait until the cooldown duration is over. Okay, so this is where the debounce thing comes back. So now that the wait's over, we want to allow it so that if a player touches it again, they can get more health. Now that's really easy to do, we could then set it, the debounce is false. Okay, that's the end of our script. So, if we go back to our world and test it. Now if we give our player some damage for the red block over here. A bit more on that. And if we come back over to our hill block, you will see that our health just jumped rapidly, so it works. And if we do it again, it's refilled. However, if I get some more damage, and I'm going to spam it this time, and I'll walk over it loads, you see we're not getting any more health, it's just that one turn. Okay, I hope that was helpful and that you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.